If you have spent any time on the internet, you surely have encountered a piece of fun media that you couldn't stop thinking about, for better or for worse. Fanfiction allows fans of media to further explore worlds and characters they love, using their creativity to go through and explore paths, in most cases being smart. So I had this idea. What if I collaborated with other artists to create art pieces based on fanfictions the others wrote, to make beautiful, outstanding, not at all cursed illustrations? And that's how this video came to exist, if you're asking. Oh, I didn't know you wrote fanfiction. I don't, but I enjoy playing friendly fanfic, so that's close enough. Frantic Fanfic is a browser game whose entire premise is to write fanfiction. This is obviously not a sponsor, it's just a very fun game to play with your friends and I would heavily recommend it. And as I said before, I'm not alone in this video. I invited two other art YouTubers who might be familiar with. Okay, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'll introduce myself because I'm really sexy. I actually just woke up. It is 7 p.m. and I am dead, but Good that's morning. okay. Because I'm Kifwen and I'm really sexy. Um, hi, I'm Blue. I am excited to be here and also extremely nervous. Yay! <laughs> so we're gonna play Frantic Fanfic and I set the timer for every round to be three minutes. The first thing the game is gonna ask you is to suggest five characters and any five characters that you want and they're going to get shuffled as everyone's options. After that you'll have to pick two characters from the suggestions and start right at the beginning of a fanfic. After three minutes the stories are going to get shuffled and you're gonna have to write the continuation of a random story by another player and after another three minutes it will happen again and you'll have to write the ending. I think it's pretty easy to understand, but if you have any questions, you, you can ask. Sounds good. No questions? Okay, then let's begin. I, I gave a thumbs up in real <laughs> life, but like, you, can't, you can't hear that. <laughs> okay, now you have to write the characters. Who already wrote Hatsune Miku? Uh, that was like one of the first characters I, I wrote. <laughs> yeah, I think e in every single round, pe people write Hatsune Miku. Oh my god. This is gonna be so cursed. Oh my fucking god. Good. Well, there's <laughs> two obvious choices I've ever fucking had. So... Good luck, everyone. Holy shit, I'm gonna jump off a building. What am I writing? Oh my god, this is atrocious. I really don't know what to do with these two. <laughs> this this one's making me nervous. <laughs> I can't fix this. <laughs> this. This is all I got. We played a couple of rounds just to have a good bunch of picks to choose from. Unfortunately, we couldn't do all of them. But here are some highlights. The fight was intense. Uh, Cat Noir was fast. So he avoided all Sans' attacks, but he didn't expect that Sans would do the same. The fight was the fight was lasted for hours. Not a single hit landed. The two fighters could barely breathe. Wait, why are we fighting again? Asked the cat boy. You killed all my family and friends, the skeleton replied. Who, the monsters? I was trying to protect Paris. Those people had a life. They had hopes and dreams. The real monster is... Your mother. It was a normal day in Splatsville. Fry just finished recording with Silver and Big Man and was going back home when she heard some big explosions. What the fuck? She said in her English language. She approached the place where the booms were coming from and she encountered a blonde anime man. Hello, I'm Bakugo from My Hero Academia. A billion has sent me to this weird squid dimension and I'm trying to find a way to go back. Fry said in English. <laughs> Did you know you have rights? Saul Goodman looked at Denji, who was currently having a mental breakdown. After that, we gave ourselves a couple of weeks to work on the illustration. So let's just do a little time skip to the final reaction call in all our speed paints. Okay, so I can't wait to see what you guys did for the illustrations. I made what I would call the artwork of all time. Does anyone want to go first or should I? as the host go first. You as the host, I think. Okay. 
Yeah, it makes sense. So Steven Universe being on vacation was in a new town, but he was craving pizza. So he headed out to the local joint known as Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. He entered ready to order, but saw some rather unsettling animatronics up on the stage. Or, 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 or. This sound came from the bare one. Steven brushed it off, heading up to the front desk to order pizza from a yellowish animatronic rabbit. Hey kid, do you want to see the animatronics up close and personal? The rabbit asked. He seemed familiar. Oh, no thanks, I just want to get a pizza. The rabbit aggressively wraps an arm around a kid. I'm sure it'd be alright, Freddy really wants to meet ya. Steven creates a bubble, pushing away the dusty old rabbit. Your time is up, Afton! I finally found you! You think you're so clever? William Afton replies. Freddy, come get this kid! Freddy started attacking, but Steven Universe deflected all his attacks. Steven was about to win when he comically slipped on a banana peel that was strangely placed on the floor. Freddy grabbed Steven and was about to do the bite of 87 too. No, Freddy, you shouldn't fight me because that's bad. Just let me sink my feeling. Steven started singing. Freddy, don't bite me, bite the purple guy because he's purple and evil. Hur, hur, hur. Freddy started crying and unexpectedly started hugging Steven. Then it happened. They fused. What? screamed the purple guy. It's for sober, Aptoon, said Fred even as he bit off his head. The end. Oh my god! That's so good. Um, wow! <laughs> I like the I like sands in the back and Bill Cipher. <laughs> oh my god, the face in the door! It's actually beautiful. That's haunting. This this will fuel my nightmares now. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I I really don't know what to say about it. It's, it, it's just the best thing I'll probably ever draw. I'm very proud of it. And I'm, I'm quitting. I'm, I'm not drawing anything apart from this. Goodbye. Who wants to go next? I'll go. I, I made something beautiful. We're all out of this delight, exclaimed Madoka. What do you mean? We just made a batch this morning. Walter White angrily responds. Cubie must have taken it all for himself, Madoka replies. Walter White angrily slams his fist down on the table. I know it was you who did it, Madoka. Madoka asks, Mr. White, are you accusing me of smoking what we cooked? She said, her eyes bright red, clearly high as all hell. Madoka, just this one. Once I might let you get away with it. The last person I asked for help did the same as let's just say they're swimming with the fishes, Walter grumbled, sliding his hand over the gun on the table. Madoka's eyes narrowed, summoning her magical girl form. What Madoka wasn't expecting was that Mr. White was also a magical girl. He had the most beautiful and breathtaking magical girl transformation of all time. So beautiful that words cannot describe it. I'm just not going to do it. Madoka started attacking, but Mr. White was simply too powerful. I'm the one who knocks it. In the name of Bluebeth, I shall punish you! Mr. White released all his energy, pulverizing Madoka on the spot. She didn't stand a chance. Mr. White reverted to his civilian form. Why does this always happen? Oh well, it's time to find a replacement. Mr. White grabbed his phone and started calling someone. Usagi, we need to cook. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, the, the armpit hair. I've added this to my nightmare fuel. This is incredible. I want to have this tattooed. The lighting in this is haunting. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I've never seen Madoka more traumatized than in this picture. I, I, I can't stop staring at Walter White's outfit. It's, it's beautiful. I think I gave him a beautiful fit, and I, and I obviously made it blue for a reason. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's perfect. I love it. Okay, blue. What? I mean, I was gonna ask you if you want to go next, but you have no choice. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, so Hatsune Miku woke up from her Minecraft bed and set out for the journey of a lifetime. 
She threw her eyes of Ender before eventually making her way down into the stronghold. Swinging her way through the overgrown structure, she activated the portal and jumped in. Ow! Immediately, she was under attack by Endermen. They came all towards her, grabbing her and screeching. Somebody needs to help our idol. With the attack continuing, her diamond armor starting to get destroyed, a terrifying screech came from above. It was the Ender Dragon. She wasn't prepared for this fight. Miku didn't know what to do. She raised her sword in a feeble attempt to scare away the Endermen. Luckily, Miku is very autistic, so she didn't make any eye contact with the Enderman and had an advantage in the fight. Now her main target was the Ender Dragon. She was prepared to strike with her sword at the dragon as it landed, but before she could do that, the dragon said, Hatsune Miku? You can talk? Asked Miku. She was shocked. Yes, I'm your biggest fan. You inspired me to become a musician, but no one wants to listen to my music. Oh my god, Miku would love to listen to your music. The Ender Dragon, with a single tear falling from her eye. Miku, I knew I could count on you. Pulling out her mixtape, the Ender Dragon plays her newest song. As the song comes to an end and the music dies out, the Ender Dragon shuffles nervously. So Miku, what do you think? Miku, with a smile on her face, responds. Yeah, that was ass. Then Miku kills the Ender Dragon. I... I accidentally made two pieces, um... You know how you do sometimes, you accidentally make two pieces. How do you accidentally do that? It, it happens. It's, it's part of the art journey. <laughs> so, here is the first art piece. What? The Ender Dragon is so cute! Oh my... It's like... Oh. Thank you, thank you. But that's where the, the good vibes stop. This is this is the second piece. Oh, no! I mean, yeah, I, I knew I knew what was coming because I remember the story, but... Very sad. No. But, oh my god, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this piece, and I'm obsessed with the color, and it's so... It's so pretty. Like, I think the problem is that it's very pretty, and it just had Tsunami cooking in the <laughs> Ender Dragon. Man, you, you both did so well. I, I, I love them. Absolutely so... beautiful pieces all around. Yeah, it was so fun. I'm so, I'm so happy with all these <laughs> results. <laughs> They're so both extremely cursed and beautiful. <laughs> We did it! We did it! We survived! Okay. <laughs> Th thank you. Thank you so much again for joining this collab. It was so much fun! If you like this video, I dare you to check both Kifwen and Potato Blue's channels. They are both incredible artists, and I'm so happy they joined me in this Betty Curse video. So thank you. And another thank you to my patrons Blanca Lee Jones, Sprocket Rocket, the or as a team, Austin Graff, Jinx Studios, Soapy Soapster, Anymore, Pedal Book Interactive, Natip Art, Mr. Wilkinson79, Riz, and Wolf Mitchell. I hope you'll have fun with this silly video idea. I'd be down to record a second part and include more artists, but that's all for this one. Bye!